Hello and welcome to the first interview conducted by the Rebel Secular Student Society. I'm Drew Pruitt, president of the Secular Student Society, and our first guests are the cast of the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe podcast. The Skeptic's Guide is a weekly podcast discussing science news, critical thinking, education, and more. Guests on their show have included Christopher Hitchens, Bill Nye, James Randi, Matt Stone, and former president of the United States, Jimmy Carter. They have 130,000 listeners every week and have had over 16 million downloads in the last five years. We hope you enjoy the interview. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. First question I have for you guys, you guys operate under the banner of skepticism specifically. You know, we're, we're a secular student society. And there's, there's a lot of talk kind of within a broader movement of kind of uniting all of the groups. You know, there are atheist groups, there are skeptical groups, there are um, secular groups, there are a lot of different labels that all kind of fall under a bigger banner, but there's not, they're not exactly the same group. You know, we're only, we're only a year old, but you guys have been doing this for five years at the podcast, and then longer with, uh, with Skeptic and, and with the New England Skeptical Society. Like, yeah. what, what do you guys think are the advantages of kind of uniting those different groups, or, or is it better to have them separate? I think it's better to keep them separate. Special, specialization for me is the big yeah. thing. Why, why we would want to keep them separate and not unite them. Yeah, I think right now we have a hybrid where there's lots of individual groups that can define themselves and their scope and their interests, and that's great. But they're loosely affiliated, you know, like at this at the amazing meeting, we're going to see people who are atheists, secularists, humanists, and skeptics. You know, some with more of a science, you know, focus, some more of a even a humanist focus. It's all good. So I, I don't think it's really viable to try to organize you know, the, the full range of the, the rationalist movements under one top-down cohesive movement. It's never going to work. It never has worked. It uh, wouldn't take place either. Yeah, just, I mean, there's I, no way to do it. You need you to have it. Yeah. Just never, never going to get us all in the same room. I mean, in essence, like Steve was saying, like our organization, we, we focus on education, science education, critical thinking education. And, you know, we do a pretty good job at it. We enjoy doing it. You know, but do we want to talk about more of the religious end of things? We don't. We just don't go there because we actually, in our circumstance, you know, we we feel like we have the opportunity to pull people in. So, like for example, if we were talking a lot more about like the atheist movement, a lot of our listeners would just flat out just stop listening. So I think it is good for like Steve and everyone was saying, like, just keep them separate, but cross the streams when appropriate. Like Tam, perfect example of us crossing the streams. Okay. Well, we, we do, you know, we, at the university at, at UNLV, we do a lot of, you know, science education, we do a lot of promoting other speakers that come onto campus with, with various things. And one of the things that we love about your podcast is you guys talk about things that kind of have real day-to-day -day value to, to the listeners, you know, things that people within the movement or people outside of the movement or in the community as a whole can learn and actually utilize. It's not just, oh, let's get together and pat each other on the back and have a good time hanging out. You know, so when we're at the Secular Student Society on campus trying to say, what can we do that will actually make a difference in, you know, in the lives of those that are out there? You know, what, what kind of events or things would you guys say that, that groups should be doing more of in terms of actual day-to-day -day usefulness? Well, it's hard to talk about what groups should be doing more of because I think, kind of calling back to the previous question, a variety of approaches I think is really the best. And when I started Boston Skeptics in the Pub, um, a few years back, there was already a Boston Atheist group. Their main focus seemed to be, though, on um, they would get together at people's houses and do readings, they would do social activities, and um, it seemed to me that their main goal was to provide a social network for atheists, where previously that never that, that sort of um, thing would be filled by, by church. Um, but the, the skeptics, our goal was uh, more in encouraging people to learn and to think critically, um, and so it was a bit more activism focused. And I find that in general, um, that tends to be a big difference between atheist groups and skeptic groups, is that atheist groups tend to focus on the answer they've come to, which is fine, and skeptics focus on getting to the answers in general, um, which is also fine. Um, and then you, have, you do have your, your atheists and more often I think your humanist groups that do activism, that focus on political issues that affect atheists, things like that. Um, personally, I've, I've already established my own community of friends um, to develop that, that social aspect that um, 
some atheists, I think, and, and free thinkers feel that they may be missing. So I have that already. So the head nodding sort of choir preaching um, isn't really of that much interest to me. I'm much more interested in um, campaigning for, um, for atheist rights and, and, and things like that. So personally, and I'm not saying that this is for everyone, but personally I do enjoy seeing campaigns like, um, like Sense About Science in, in England's campaign to reform, uh, for, for reform libel law, sorry, to reform libel law, um, because it's important it affects science, it's, um, it affects science communication and they're actually making headway. Um, or for instance, a campaign to, to look on the religious end of things, the campaign to stop uh, the Pope from coming to visit England on the taxpayer's dime. Um, I think that these are great causes to get people fired up and interested. So I always enjoy seeing things like that. And you should also consider who your audience is. Um, I have to admit, when we started our podcast, we didn't really say, well, what's our, tar our target audience? We had more of an idea of what our listeners would be, like not an age range or whatever. But if you're like at you're in college, right? Your yeah. organization is based on your college. Yeah, I would actually think about what's going on regionally that people would know about. Like, you, you want to hook people with things that they, they're interested in. You know, and people like us, we're all interested in science news and things like that. Those are no-brainers. But you could do stuff more regionally with a new group. But you should think about like what's going on at the college that people care about. And, and you, you'll get people interested that way. And locally in the town that the school is in, and then the age range of the people that are at your school. And along those lines, um, I think it's great to point out groups like my fellow skeptic Elise Anders started an organization in Chicago called Women Thinking Free. And they uh, are focused on communicating vaccination information to mothers and others who um, aren't, don't consider themselves skeptics and aren't necessarily knowledgeable in, um, in critical thinking. And they don't tell them about skeptics. They don't talk about the skeptical community because it's not important. What's important is communicating facts to them in a, in a way that is a bit different from the way you might, for instance, a talk you might hear here at TAM about vaccination. You're addressing a completely different group of mothers who have different concerns. I love to see groups that cross those boundaries that think from the believer's perspective and find new ways of reaching out to people outside of the skeptical yeah, I don't think there's any formula, I think, is what we're saying. I think that because it's so individualistic mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe a little opinionated, but that's okay. <laughs> we all sort of do our own thing. I think we, my experience has been that the groups that are the most successful are the ones that are experimenting, that are finding new ways to do things. They say, well, that's a great idea, that, you know, that whatever it is, mm -hmm. whether it's like the 1023 campaign, trying to, let's show the world how stupid homeopathy is. Great, that's something right. that no one else is doing. You, you, can, you care about it, you know about it, it's in your sweet spot. You know, it, it's we're at a point where experimentation is good. You know, letting a thousand you know flowers bloom is good, and there really isn't a formula. There's nobody who can tell you what you should do or what works, because nobody knows really. That's a beautiful metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> flowers. Yes. <laughs> but you know, Drew, like you have to be kind of honest with yourself and say you want people to come. You right. want to hook people, and you can either hook people by having it be fun, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like that's why skeptics in the pub is great because it's a social event. People have something, they might have you know, commonality, they might think the same or feel the same. You, you know, you can start more of a social club that way and you don't have to hit people over the head with the skepticism, get your, get your numbers up, get a cool speaker in. You're, you know, colleges have budgets. And Nudity, you, that always works. Well, that worked with us. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know, like colleges have budgets. Like if you go in and have right. a group, let's say you get 50 people at your school, then uh, you could go in and say, I have 50 people in an organization, I want a budget next year. Next thing you know, they're giving you money, more money than you probably would expect, and then you can hire a speaker. Next thing you know, you have 400 people from the school coming in.